Hey there Knights, Red Leader here, and welcome to Knights of the Trail. I'm going to talk to you today about why I switched from a trail runner to a more traditional style waterproof hiking boot. Before I tell you the shoe that I ended up choosing, I want to tell you a little story about why I switched from a trail runner to a more traditional style hiking boot. It all began two years ago when Silent Night and I decided to go up for a little hike at the Natural Bridge in Slade, Kentucky. It was one of our first major hiking trips and the furthest that we had been away from home to do such a thing. <laughs> We ended up climbing all the way to the top on this trail. Somehow I ended up hurtling over boulders and shimmying up little rock facings and avoided tree stumps. You name it, I did it. We finally get to the top and it's a magnificent view and we spent a lot of time up there. It wasn't until we decided to head home that, believe it or not, on the stairs leading down, I stepped on the last stair, which was not really a step. It wasn't flat like steps are. It was more of a, a log that was impacted into the ground. And it was kind of slippery, so when I stepped down on it, my leg went one way and my ankle went the other way. And I totally popped my ankle out of socket. It was the most excruciating pain that I have ever felt in my whole life. I let out this blood-curdling scream and nearly blacked out from the pain. Somehow, I managed to pop my ankle back in place and hobble up the steps and hop on one leg about a good mile back to the bridge. Somebody was able to contact the rangers there and they come up out of nowhere and help carry me back down to my car. That was not one of my finer moments at all. And it was rather embarrassing. I was frustrated, angry, and scared. When I went to the hospital and I was waiting on the x-rays to come back and the CAT scans, I was really uh, afraid that I wouldn't be able to hike again at all. At the time, I was wearing the Asics Venture 5s, and I'd been using those shoes for everyday travel, running. Uh, we did some smaller trails in it. They're very lightweight, and I really enjoyed them. But uh, thank goodness the scans came back, and they, they found out that I didn't actually break my ankle, but it did pop out of socket, tore some ligaments, and I had to stay off of it for a while. So I was on crutches. When I'm not out hiking, I'm working as a security officer, so you can imagine how that went with a security officer at a behavioral unit on crutches. So I knew something had to change. I needed a little bit more ankle support. And that's when I started doing a lot of research. One of the major reasons why I decided to go with a trail runner shoe is because I watched a lot of YouTube videos and they were talking about, you know, you don't want to get Gore-Tex. You don't want to get a waterproof boot because if water does get inside, and it will get inside eventually, it'll stay inside and it just won't dry out. I think that's good advice, but... I also think you have to ask yourself, what are you going to be doing with this shoe? Are you going to be hiking thousands of miles or hundreds of miles with multiple day overnighters where a wet shoe really becomes detrimental to uh, the health of your foot in being able to complete such a trek, right? Or are you going to be doing just an, a day trip? primarily. Are you going to be doing an overnight, maybe two overnights? If that's you, which is where I am at right now, you know, you might want to look for a more sturdy, wider base boot that can protect your ankles and waterproof. Now, 
I'm the only one in Knights of the Trail that has waterproof shoes. And I can't tell you how many times that I've went out, you know, in wet conditions or having to cross a stream or whatever, and I came back with the only dry feet. So those are some things to consider. Now, after I did a lot of research, I came across my local sporting goods store and found the Merle Moab 2 waterproof shoe. And what appealed to me about this shoe was that it wasn't a complete full boot. Um, I mean, this is a low cut. They do make a mid cut, but I don't think I was ready for mid cut yet. I wanted to try these out. But what I love about this shoe is it's got a very wide foot base here. And I can't tell you how many times this particular shoe has saved my ankle. With my trail runner shoes, the Venture 5s, I was finding my ankle just moving around with the rocks and everything like that. And when I was younger, that would have been no problem for me. But now as I'm getting older, um, I can see things not being as flexible as they used to be. So having this little wider footprint here has really saved me by balancing my body out. There's been many times that I felt my foot going one way and my ankle going the other, but then it just kind of even leveled out there. I have switched to tre trekking poles, by the way, but I can feel the shoe just like actively leveling out my foot and ankle. Another thing that I love about this shoe is this toe guard right here. It's a really thick piece of rubber, and it really protects your toes from hitting a very large object such as a boulder or a tree stump or roots sticking out of the ground. You can't, <laughs> can't tell you how many times that I hit one of those suckers and was glad that I had this big thick thing on there. It's got one here on the back too. It's, it's pretty thick back there. I also love this because when you slide in your foot, it just goes in and it just hugs your foot. And actually, it makes this sucking sound when you're... And you know your foot's in there and it's locked in tight. And it's like your foot actually melds with the shoe itself. It's got this huge tongue on it that's made out of closed cell foam that keeps any kind of rocks, debris, sand, water out. And you can tell, I've, I put a, over a hundred miles on this shoe already. Used it all last year for my backpacking and it never got wet on the inside and I never had any problems with debris, rocks, or pebbles on the inside either. They claim that this is waterproof and it's got this select dry. I'm sure that's their version of Gore-Tex, but it seems to work and I've never found my feet getting really, really sweaty to the point to where I have any problems with blisters or cracking or anything like that. Now, I will tell you that Merle is not a sponsor. I paid for this out of my own pocket. I'm just giving you some advice and try to save some ankles out there because that was some crazy pain that I don't want anybody to have to go through. This particular shoe has the patented Vibram tread on it. I believe it was voted like the number one tread pattern of all tread patterns. And as soon as I tried this out, like I was going up hills like, like nothing else. And it's holding up very well. I've used it for all of 2018, and I'm probably going to use it for all of 2019 as well. Now the boots are kind of heavy. We're going to go ahead and weigh them here. One boot is one pound. And of course, you're going to have two boots weighing 2.2 pounds. For those of you who measure in grams, we'll go ahead and measure that in grams. 
and you're looking at 969 grams. So it's not a light shoe, that's for sure. Well, Knights, that was a look at the Merle Moab 2 waterproof hiking shoe. And please subscribe down below for more hiking backpacking tips, recipes, gear reviews. And just, plus we have a very wide range of adventure videos getting ready to come up. And we don't want you to miss out on those either. So until next time, Knights, stay strong and hike on.